YouTube as they go in the goat house is back with my NFL week seven score predictions, predicting the score to every game, taking a look at the lines as well. And if you want even more score predictions, Junior, the current leader and the defending champ, uh, his score predictions are on the Patreon, patreon.com slash the goat house link in the description. And if you sign up for that tier, you also get updated playoff predictions, which I did this week already and will continue to do every single week. And same goes for the NFL mock draft still to come this week, but updated every single week, updated order and prospects, things constantly changing um, with trades too. You see the, the Jags come up, coming up with an extra draft pick. So things changing in that way and based off college football play there. And uh, we're trying to get to that 40 K subscriber goal. So please help us out by subscribing We got NFL recaps, power rankings, predictions, score predictions, plenty more. We always talk trades, trade scenarios, trade grades, college football content as well. And we go all year long, not just in the season. So please subscribe, turn notifications on, click that like button. Check us out on Twitter, at GoatHouseNFL. Always tweeting during uh, live during games. Uh, But this week's score predictions here, some pretty good games, um, and we're going to break them down here. I I was surprised uh, at the Lions because – um, you know, I, I predict the score before looking at the line. I think that helps best. And then I plug the line in there, and it's just I, I, w- I was surprised by some of them. We'll break that down. Uh, the Thursday games, the Chiefs and the Broncos, I got the Chiefs winning by four, and it's pretty close to that line. Um, you know, I mean, I don't see the Chiefs losing three straight. I know that's not, not a reason for them winning, but I'm just kind of wanting to say that too. It's just I think everybody's in the same you know, boat. I just we just don't see them losing another game, but it very well could happen. The Broncos are playing extremely well. Uh, I'd say on both sides of the ball, they're really picking things up on offense. You know, I think their the record doesn't show how good they are. And you know, this being a division battle in Denver Thursday night football, that gives them somewhat of an edge. Uh, I just like the bounce back from the Chiefs here. You know, a, a team that. The Broncos, you know, like I said, they're playing on both sides of the ball, but you know, at the same time, they're mainly going to win with their defense. They held the Titans to zero points. You know, uh, they didn't score a whole bunch of points. They didn't enough, but only the zero points. You know, the Chiefs aren't a team you're going to beat with your defense. You know, you need to have a little. Their offense is picking it up, but you need to have a little more offense. So the matchup definitely favors the Chiefs. Uh, I just don't see them going, you know, crazy. You know, 27 is kind of, you know, the range I'm thinking. Uh, because they are beat up still, but uh, you know I think they get Damian Williams going a little more. I think I keep saying that, but I mean last week he had one carry, one reception, had a touchdown. It's just ridiculous. He needs more. I think he'll get more now that it's another week being healthy. Uh, we'll see though. Um, but I got the Chiefs winning by four points. Vikings and Lions this is a good one. NFC North battle. I do have the Vikings winning by a touchdown, but I do I I am good with this this line. You know I I think that's about where I predicted it, but. I still think the Vikings win by a touchdown. I'm playing the matchup here. Who knows what the refs are going to do? You know, maybe they hate the Lions. Maybe they feel like they need to gift them. I mean, that, that's why you probably shouldn't put money on this game because uh, you can argue either way. Uh, just going by the matchup, I think it really favors the Vikings. You know, they they always seem to get some really good pass rushing game plan on the defensive side going against the Lions. So that's why maybe not too many points. Uh, and, and um, you know, a lot of man coverage from the Lions too. So I worry about how they're going to man up on Diggs and Thielen. Um, you know, those are guys that you uh, really, you know, corners don't really enjoy manning up on those guys with their route running and their quickness and speed. Um, you know, so I, I think, and then having Delvin Cook and have the, the running game going and him being involved in the passing game and Kirk Cousins is rolling. Um, you know, I think all those factors kind of go into that. Uh, the Lions, do they have enough on offense? You know, I know they had, they're getting a little better. And now their defense gets got, got a lot better. Um, so I think that could be the reason they win. But do they have enough on offense? We've seen them. Um, you know, end up ending drives and field goals instead of touchdowns last week, which you can win the game doing that. They should have won the game doing that before, but I don't think they win this game if that continues. And, you know, soon, it seems like the Vikings let teams kind of get to midfield. It's not too hard to get to around midfield. And then all of a sudden the defense, turn, defense turns it up a notch, and it's real hard to keep it going further, um, you know, in further in their territory. So that that's where the Lions could struggle in this game, but who knows what's going to happen with the officiating. I got the Vikings winning by a touchdown, though. Uh, next game is the Rams and the Falcons. Uh, it's a great, great time to play the Falcons for the Rams. Um, you know, bounce back game. They're playing the worst defense. I don't care who's out for the Rams. They're playing the worst defense in football. There's really no motivation at the same time. Uh, the Rams really get going in this game. I know 34 is a lot, but I, I'm confident they can get going in that range into the 30s. Uh, and you know, they got to. They got to use a variety of running backs. You know, I, I know they're trying to save Gurley, but I would like for them to use Daryl Henderson more. I think he can do more. 
Um, they got to try to get, I know Cooks was shaken up a couple weeks ago. They got to try to get him going a little more. I think it's doable. See if Ramsey plays this week. Um, it's not really a difference either way. Um, you know, the, the Falcons, the key for them is just start. It's, the, you know, you would think the key is to play good defense, but let's just say that's just not going to happen. You can't really expect it to happen at this point. To me, 100% the key is starting the game off strong on offense. You know, we see them put up all these points, but we see them coming from behind because they don't start well on offense. It's mainly because they're defense, but like I said, it's going to happen. Let it happen here. Offense got to start strong. That's going to be kind of the um, the factor for the Falcons here. And the offense is capable of doing that. I know the offense line's holding them back a little bit. Expect a little more from Matt Ryan early. I expect a little more from the receiver unit early. Can they get it done against the struggling Rams team? Uh, I, I got I got the Rams winning by seven. It's just I am the, the better team on, on both sides of the ball. I really do. And they're minus three, so that's definitely an interesting one. Um, you know, they should win by a touchdown. Dolphins and Bills, uh, plus 17 for the Dolphins. I got them losing 23-6 to six here. So what is that? That is 17 points. What do you know? Um, but, yeah, I, I just don't see the Dolphins scoring too many points. I don't even have them scoring a touchdown. I'm getting uh, six points here. Uh, the Bills, it is hard to trust the Bills to put up a whole bunch of points. You know, maybe you, know, you would think they can get more than this, but... Uh, you know, we'll see. I think they'll use the running game a lot. You know, Singletary is supposed to be back, ready to go, I think. And Frank Gore's looks solid, uh, and they had their bye week to get rested. So I think they really go like they really go wild with Gore and Singletary, uh, which runs the clock, which kind of limits how many times you score. I think the running game's key. Uh, the the defense doesn't even need to play where it has been playing. You know, it can play close to that, and they'll be just fine here. So twenty three to six is what I got for the Bills here. And Jags and the Bengals, 24-13. Jags, I think they get a little bit of offense going here. And they're only minus 3.5, so uh, if that knocks down to 3, I love that one. Uh, you know, 3.5, you know, as, you know, looking at my score here, I, I like it still, but, you know, the difference between, anybody should know, the difference between 3.5 and, and 3 uh, just makes you feel a little more comfortable with it. But um, I think it's a bad matchup for the Bengals, really. I mean, they could go out and score points here. Um but, I mean, the, uh, the Jacks' defense looks solid, looks good. I think they'll get an incredible pass rush. The Bengals have one of the worst, maybe the worst offensive line in football so far this year. I just don't see the Bengals really scoring more than this. You know, I'd say 17 tops. Uh, and the Jags, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to move the ball on them. Um, so I got them with 24. So that's winning by 11. Uh, it looks like a, looks like a good one there. But hopefully, you know, the Jags lost two straight. Hopefully they're not getting down because of that. You know, they played some good teams, and it, and it, and it stayed tight there. Uh, Raiders and Packers, I got uh, I got somewhat of a shootout here, uh, 31-27. It's another tough one to pick here because the Raiders run fire, um, and then you could argue they can continue that right now. They can continue that that rolling, uh, but they had a bye. Did that slow them down, or they did that, um, you know, because they knew they were playing the Packers during that bye, so they had time to game plan. And I think it's a team you can, in terms of their offense, the Packers offense, you can try to game plan for because they have a similar script early in the game every week. Um, but it, do the Raiders defense ha, doesn't have enough? That's kind of the question. I think Josh Jacobs plays a good game. Um, you know, the difference, really, even though it's a high-scoring game, the difference could be a turnover here, and I think the, the Packers defense can come up with a turnover on Derek Carr, possibly. Uh, I think he'll play a solid game, though. It's kind of a bold prediction. But uh, the Packers, you know, basically in this game, since it's somewhat of a shootout, I mean, high, in Lambeau, how do you not pick the Packers here? That's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll see how the refs react uh, to this, you know. You can argue both ways, just like I said about the Lions game after last week. Um, you, know, you know, the Packers are at the top of the NFL and yards yards gained from other teams' penalties. So, you know, that usually that's not something that, that changes. Usually, you know, they continue to be able to force those things from what they do, mainly on their offense. So that can continue. Uh, maybe the refs feel like, you know, they owe them, uh, you know, some bad calls because what I, I don't know what's going to happen, in, you know, in today's NFL's officiating. What their thought process in is either way, it's not good. You know, it's a little sketchy, but you, it's impossible to predict. Uh, but in terms of the matchup, like I explained, the Raiders could be ready with the rest. Uh, but it, I, you, everyone's got to assume it, it's somewhat somewhat of a high scoring game, and, and it's you got to go with the Packers in that type of game. You know, it's totally different than playing the Bears, who they played the, the last time they played. Totally different type of game. Um, so we'll see. Should be should be an interesting one, definitely. Uh, next game is the Texans and the Colts, and I'll say right now, you you don't put money on this game. Maybe you're super confident over there. 
I mean, two strange teams to me. I, I'd say I say it every week. You know, I think the Colts are a super weird team because you know the weeks that you don't really feel you're not really feeling them. You know, you're you're not really trusting them fully. Um, you know, they they, they prove you wrong. One hundred percent, they prove you wrong. Both sides of the ball, the execution, and the weeks you're 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 feeling them. You know, they're gonna you're, you're confident in them. You know, they kind of let you down. It happens sometimes, but. Maybe so far this year they have a legitimate excuse that they were injured. I mean, they were injured against other teams too, and they were just fine. Um, you know, they struggled against the Raiders, and this is a similar matchup to that. So you could say the Texans could handle them like the Raiders did. Um, you know, but I think the Colts are healthier now. They had the bye week. They got the rest. They had time to game plan for this. The Texans, you know, I think both sides of the ball, you know, sometimes it looks like they have the best offense in football, then sometimes it's super disappointing in the defense too. Sometimes it's a little impressive. You didn't expect it to be that good, but then it's kind of like, you know, average to blow average. So you just don't know what you're going to get from these two teams. Um, You know, for the reasons I explained, you know, the extra time to prepare for that coaching staff for Indianapolis. I like that coaching staff a lot, one of the best in football. That's kind of the the factor. I love this Texans team. I don't love their coach. Uh, I don't really trust his game plan all the time. I know he's going to have good game plans here and there. It's kind of the difference for me In, in Indianapolis at the same time, too. Uh, so you can see I have a two-point game. I have, a, I have a good amount of yardage in this game. I think we can get some good red zone defense, possibly one of those games. Some field goals, basically what I'm getting at. Um, you know, they got to hit their field goals, though. Vinatieri's got to hit his field goal. Um, but two-point win there. Texans are plus one. And just because the two teams that are playing, I'd say don't touch it. Uh, the Cardinals and the Giants, 30-28, to 28, a two-point win when it's a three-point favorite in the Giants. Uh, I think, uh, you know... Both teams a little weaker on defense. I like the in this particular matchup. I like the Giants a little better. Um, you know they have the D line and the young athletic pass rushers. That's that's the key. You know going up against this new school offense, um, especially the D. You can even say the DBs too. Going against the the new school offense, the spread offense. Kyler Murray just coming in from college. Kingsbury just coming in from college. Um, they they run, you know, five wide receiver sets, four to five receiver sets. You know these young guys are kind of used to that, and especially with the weaker offensive line. I I think. Um, that'll be enough. Obviously, I don't think the defense will be dominant in this game. They'll give up the yards. It's a hard offense to stop, uh, but I think it'll be just enough. You know, just enough in two teams that are scoring. Uh, they're going to continue to score. Uh, you know, the edge looking at both teams' defenses. I, I give it to the Giants a little bit here. Uh, offense, there's really you know Kyler Murray's going to run. He's going to throw the defense off, but then you kind of got Saquon for the Giants. Uh, there's really no huge difference there. I mean, Saquon could be the big the, the difference in this game. I think he could he could he could run very well. But we see teams run very well. They run wild all the time, and, and they still lose. We see them the Giants with Saquon. You know, couldn't win, and they were winning without him. It really has nothing to do with him. Obviously, he's you know he could be the best running back in football. I mean, if you start the season over and everyone's healthy, he probably is the best running back in football. Um, but my point is, um, he's not going to be a huge factor. I think he'll be a pretty good factor. Um, but we'll see. Should be a high-scoring game. I got the Giants winning by two in this one. And they get healthier, too. That's another thing. The Giants, you know, besides Saquon, receivers, too, uh, they get uh, they get uh, rested up. They're, they're healthy because they played on Thursday night last week. So they had time. Uh, the Niners in the Redskins. Nine, I was kind of surprised by the 9.5 um, originally. And I do have them winning by 17. I mean, I just don't see how this uh, the Redskins team can. I mean, the Niners... Top five defense right now, you can argue even better. I mean, top three possibly. You know, uh, I don't really go off the stats too much. It just I watch the teams and then figure out how good they are. But uh, they're up there. You know, I know the Patriots are statistically one, and you can debate. You know, in your own opinion, if you think they're actually the best or not. Uh, the Niners are legit though, and it's it's it starts up front that D line, that pass rush. And, uh, I mean, they got a good linebacker unit, too. And then it goes back. You know, the only weakness going into the season was thought was safety. And they get Jimmy Ward back now, and he's playing He's playing very good football. So I just don't see the Redskins scoring a lot of points. You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe 17, very max. I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, and the Niners should be able to put some points up. You know, Jimmy G's got to be on his game, though. You know, we've seen them against the Steelers. They look sloppy because they fumbled a lot. We can't have that. And then Jimmy G's got to hit his throws, which he should be able to do against those Redskins secondary. Uh, so that's where I came up with 27 to 10. Nine and a half was kind of surprising, but it kind of got me thinking, though. You got to remember the Niners are still beat up. You know, they played an, another beat up team in the Rams last week. Um, so could that kind of, you know, just playing a, a late afternoon game last Sunday and, and kind of going into this game with another week with those guys hurt, you know, out, McGlinchey, use check, um, you know, could that. 
could that affect you more going forward? And the answer is yes, it definitely can. Uh, the more you play, you know, it definitely affects you. Hopefully other guys stay healthy. So I guess that would be the explanation for the 9.5, I'm assuming. Uh, but, I, you know, I still see, I know 9.5 is cutting it close to what I'm about to say, but I, I still see at least 10 points here. Um, we'll see if that moves at all. That's an interesting one. Next game, we got Chargers and the Titans, another weird one. I picked the Chargers. Um, I mean, both teams are really struggling. It's another one of those games. I was surprised that the Chargers were plus two. Um, even though I'm not thrilled about this one, even though it looks like it, uh, I was just surprised by it. It's in Tennessee. It doesn't seem like Tennessee. The Titans don't seem like a team that has like a advantage at home. It doesn't. They don't seem too much different home and away. I don't know. That's kind of what I gathered. Not even just this year. Maybe last year, year before too. Maybe that's just me. Um, they they make a change at quarterback, and there's a there's a big positive and negative out of that. I, I truly believe Mariota is better uh, than Tannehill. That's the negative. Uh, the positive is I can definitely see the Titans, you know, the the offensive coaches, just the coaches in general really, opening up the playbook more because this is their last shot. They switch quarterbacks. Let's, get, you know, let's open up the playbook. Let's let them throw downfield, which they didn't let Mariota do, and I think he can do better than Tannehill, but they may just actually let it, let it loose. You know, this is it. This is it. Let's Let's let it happen. Um, you know, and that actually could win them the game. It, it really could, and it's gonna it's gonna make Dan Hill look really good if that's the case. Which, you know, I think I think you get my point. I think it's uh, it's really the coach's fault there, and the offensive line's rough too. And that's kind of why I'm going with the Chargers. Um, you know, the, I, I picked the Titans against the Broncos last week because the Titans' offensive line was struggling, but it was inconsistent. You know, some weeks it would be okay, um, and the Broncos only had five sacks going into that game, and they ended up with more than five sacks in that game. Um, so the offensive line's bad, is what I'm getting at, and uh, both quarterbacks don't help with that. They're they, they're both famous for stepping into sacks, uh, and the Chargers' pass rush, I trust it in this game. I think Gus Bradley would have something unique here to get going, and then. Um, but the Titans' defense is very good. So I mean, the Titans' defense, you know, as a core, is better than the Chargers. But the Chargers have more of a pass rush that I can trust. And you look at the offensive side. Do I trust Philip Rivers in that? Um, you know, group, you know, with the the long list of running backs and then Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and Hunter Henry, or do I trust Tannehill? And I do like Derrick Henry, even though they're kind of ruining him right now. Uh, and I like some of their receivers too, and I like Delaney Walker, but who do I trust more? I, tr- I trust Phillip Rivers and the guys, even though he's struggling a little bit. They need to use, they need to get Austin Eckler going again. Uh, they're trying to they're trying to slow him down to give Gordon some carries. It's that's, that's where it's really stupid. The more I talk about it, um, they're limiting Eckler so they can give Gordon more carries, but between the two of them and their other backs, you know, they're not getting enough carries because they're splitting so much. And, I mean, if you ever play football, I mean, especially a running back, like, talk about a groove. You know, you, you got to gain some momentum. Got to get got to get your game going. You got to get warmed up. So that, that's where they're messing up. Uh, I, really, I like Melvin Gordon a lot, but I think Eckler is working better with this offense. Helps Rivers a lot more for sure. Um, you know, so we'll see. I think a low scoring game. I got 17, 13, definitely a weird one, uh, for this week. Saints and the bears, a defensive game. I was surprised the saints were, were getting points. They're plus three. I was kind of surprised by that. Um, but as you can see, I think it'll be a close game just because of the defense, but I just figured the saints would be favored. Um, I mean, I trust both these defenses a lot. You know, I, I like them a lot. Um, you know, the Bears in elite defense from last year. We still need to see more if they're, you know, still in elite defense. But I definitely think, you know, you know, not statistically. I'd say that right at this moment, I still want to learn more, see more. I'd say the Bears are probably the best defense still. But then they do have Akeem Hicks out um, for the rest of the year, which is very tough. And uh, the Saints, I, li- I like their defense a lot. You know, the- these two defenses are definitely up there. I trust both of them. And I look at the offenses. Which one do I trust more? I definitely trust the Saints more, even with Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, I mean, Teddy Bridgewater would be is, would be the best quarterback on the Bears too. So that kind of um, explains that. But and then Trubisky coming back from what we think uh, he's coming back from uh, that injury. Uh, I know they had a bye, but it's rough. It's a rough defense to come back. I rather play. I rather come back him come back to a defense that's kind of like a lockdown defense, a shutdown defense that actually gives up less yards than the Saints. The Saints playmaking defense and they can lock down too you know they're going to get those turnovers so uh, that's kind of what I expect to happen but I, I again I don't think the Saints will have too much we'll see if Camaro's healthy uh, but it is in Chicago but I'm pretty confident with the Saints in a tight one still a tight one it's just 
I just think they're all around a better team. You know, a little more confidence in them right now. Uh, but we'll see. You know, the bye week could really help the Bears out, but they have some key guys out as well, which the Saints do have P.J. Williams out, and they could have Kamara out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say he'll play. Uh, I got the Saints 13-10 defensive battle. The Ravens and the Seahawks, I got a 21-27 Seahawks win. Seahawks are minus 3.5. Um, looks good. A little tricky, though. Because I, I can see Lamar Jackson being a real problem for the Seahawks. Uh, you know, he's gonna he's starting to we can see it. He's starting to get going, running the ball a little more. That could be a problem. Um, you know, I don't the Ravens defense I think is one of those defense I think both sides of the ball though continue to get better and better as season goes on. You know, the defense got really good at the end of last year. But right now, you know, I think the Seahawks will have enough. I um, mean you know, we talk about Will Disley, you know, it's unfortunate he's out and that, that hurts them. I don't know if that necessarily hurts them a lot right now because um, you know, you don't really know the game plan factor. You don't really know how the Seahawks are going to, you know, change. The Ravens don't know, I should say, you know, with that. Because obviously they're not going to use a tight end as much anymore. Um, and But what are they going to do exactly? You know, what what are they going to throw out there? And the Ravens really don't have a game plan for that. So really in this particular game, it's a terrible thing. If, let me get this straight. It's a terrible thing that Disley's out. Um, you know, but uh, for this game, and it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt the Seahawks a little bit going forward. I don't think anything ridiculous. I still like the Seahawks a lot uh, for this year, uh, but in this game, it actually could help them because the, the the Ravens maybe have no clue uh, what to expect from the Seahawks offense. But Lamar Jackson kind of brings that factor too. You know, you don't really, you never really know if this guy's running or throwing, or is he gonna? It's a pass play, and he's gonna take off running. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to game plan for. I like the Seahawks at home though, 27-21 in this one, so uh, plus three and a half for the Ravens. It's it's a tough one, though. Tough matchup to figure out. Next game, uh, Eagles and the Cowboys got 28-24. Eagles win. I was surprised they're plus three. They're getting they're getting three points. I was kind of surprised by that. Thought it would be around even, maybe minus one for the Eagles, minus two, two and a half, somewhere around that range. I like the Eagles in this game. Um, I'm kind of risking a lot saying this here, you know, but – I'm pretty confident in the Eagles. You know, obviously I'm not like have a, I don't have a ridiculous amount of confidence because somewhat of a tight score, but it's Sunday night in Dallas, and that's what makes it tough. But I, I just have a feeling I am 100% on Eagles games this year. We'll see if I finally lose one here. I just got a feeling. You know, I I, I got a feeling here that the Eagles. Uh, go out. I like what Doug Peterson had to say, but that's just words. You know, can you actually put it on the field? Um, I didn't like their game plan or their play calling last week. I think they realized, you know, what what they did wrong. I think they're going to go out there and play. Um, you know, I, I just, in the beat the Eagles, you throw the ball downfield. The, the Cowboys haven't really had too much success recently throwing the ball downfield. And it's kind of a, a mixture of receivers dropping the ball when Dak is on target. And then when, um, you know, other times they're open, Dak's off target. So they got to fix that right here, right now. And I don't know if they have enough of it. You know, I don't know if they have enough. Um, and the defense, you know, I expect this to be more of a defensive team. And it's, you know, there's more than Jalen Smith that that's playing okay or good enough right now. But to me, it's really just Jalen Smith out there. Um, you know, there's other guys that I trust that, that are good, and there's some guys that are extremely disappointing. But the only one that I'm, you know, that I really like on their defense at this particular moment for this season is Jalen Smith. To be, you know, perfectly honest here, uh, but I like the Eagles. I think they get their offense going enough. Um, don't trust their defense a whole bunch, but I mean, the Cowboys aren't a team that's going to really come out there and just purely beat you with offense. You know, that, that's kind of my problem. And there's just kind of, things just don't seem right over there right now. You know, the players with Garrett and not a whole bunch of confidence. It just seems like it's a, we're repeating this every single year with the Cowboys, but, and they'll pick it up at some point. We'll, we'll see when it is. Maybe it's Sunday night, but I like the Eagles and I like the Patriots over the Jets. 24-13. Uh, I like where the Jets are heading. Um, you know, they gained a lot of momentum from last week. Love the defense. Uh, I just, I'm just worried about their offense in this game. You know, Darnold looked really good. He's got a bright future. He's still going to have his mistakes. And against this, you know, the number one um, defense in football statistically right now. And with that secondary, I love this secondary. And, um, you know, I, I just, and especially, you know, I love the whole defense really. But the secondary I, I didn't think they can get a pick or two on, on Darnold, but it's it's in New York on Monday night. The the momentum, the energy could be there, and that could be the difference. The Patriots' offense hasn't been playing their best ball, so the Jets can hop on and take advantage here with their momentum home. So I can I can you know at the same time me picking the the Patriots by eleven, I can see the Jets winning too at the same time. But uh, that's what I got. That's what I got for the Patriots. I think they're just the, just the better team. They'll have a great game plan. They have till Monday. I mean, they just play on Thursday. Now they play on Monday. It's a little odd. I don't really like that scheduling. But 
yeah, that's what I got. Again, if you want to see more score predictions, you can see juniors on our Patreon link towards the top of the description, patreon.com slash goathouse. You also get plenty more, so it's not just that. Uh, if you want to kind of confirm, uh, you know, looking at both of our score predictions and take yours and see uh, where your confidence level is at after looking at those. Maybe you want to put money on games. Who knows? Uh, it's, it's a great way to stay in shape. No, I don't know. I don't know why I said that, but it's... Yeah, check it out. Patreon.com slash The Goat House. I'm rambling now. Uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.